The New York Times says AI companies are playing fast and loose when it comes to training data. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. We begin with a report from the New York Times that came out over the weekend that basically accuses the big AI labs of not even following their own policies when it comes to copyright law to say nothing of what some people think the right approach should have been. The piece begins, in late 2021, OpenAI faced a supply problem. The artificial intelligence lab had exhausted every reservoir of reputable English language text on the internet as it developed its latest AI system. It needed more data to train the next version of its technology, lots more. So OpenAI researchers created a speech recognition tool called Whisper. It could transcribe the audio from YouTube videos yielding new conversational text that would make an AI system smarter. Some OpenAI employees discussed how such a move might go against YouTube's rules. YouTube prohibits use of its videos for applications that are independent of the video platform. Ultimately, an OpenAI team transcribed more than 1 million hours of YouTube videos. The team included Greg Brockman, OpenAI's president, who personally helped collect the videos. This became core to the training data for GPT-4. Now, before we go into the rest of the piece, the Times also did a companion where they showed some of the other sources where data had come from for earlier OpenAI models. There was Common Crawl, which is text from web pages that has been collected since 2007 and represents around 410 billion tokens. There's Wikipedia, Books 1 and Books 2, which are widely believed to contain text from millions of published books, and Web Text 2, which is described as web pages linked from Reddit that received three or more upvotes which represented another 19 billion tokens. So the argument that the Times is making here is that when OpenAI hit the limits of its ability to find sources that they had perhaps legitimate access to, they dove headfirst into a gray area of scraping data from other websites, potentially against the terms of those websites. What's more, they're clearly trying to point out that this was a top-down decision, given that they say that Greg Brockman was involved. However, OpenAI, they point out, is not the only company going through something similar. The Times writes, like OpenAI, Google transcribed YouTube videos to harvest text for its AI models that potentially violated the copyrights to the videos which belong to their creators. Last year, Google also broadened its terms of service. One motivation for the change, according to members of the company's privacy team and an internal message viewed by the Times, was to allow Google to be able to tap publicly available Google Docs, restaurant reviews on Google Maps, and other online material for more of its AI products. Now, the Times piece portrays the situation as dramatic and the pressure to capture this information as immense. They write, their situation is urgent. Tech companies could run through the high-quality data on the internet as soon as 2026, according to Epic, a research institute. The companies are using the data faster than it is being produced. They quote a lawyer, Cy Domley, who represents A16Z, and in a public discussion last year around copyright law, he said, the only practical way for these tools to exist is if they can be trained on massive amounts of data without having to license that data. The data needed is so massive that even collective licensing really can't work. Now, one thing that's important to point out is that while the piece is clearly meant to intimate wrongdoing on the part of these companies, they also do acknowledge that, frankly, right now, this is a legal gray area. For example, in discussing Google's terms of service, IP lawyer Jeffrey Lautenberg said whether the data could be used for a new commercial service is open to interpretation and could be litigated. After the YouTube discussion, they also spend a bunch of time on the expansion of terms in Google's privacy policy. The Times writes, the privacy team wrote new terms so Google could tap the data for its AI models and build products and features like Google Translate, BARD, and Cloud AI capabilities. Ask one member of the privacy team in an internal message, what is the end goal here? How broad are we going? Then the piece turns its attention to Meta. They write, by early last year, Meta had hit the same hurdle as its rivals, not enough data. In March and April 2023, some of the company's business development leaders, engineers, and lawyers met nearly daily to tackle the problem. Some debated paying $10 a book for the full licensing rights to new titles. They discussed buying Simon & Schuster. They also talked about how they had summarized books, essays, and other works from the internet without permission and discussed sucking up even more, even if that meant facing lawsuits. One lawyer warned of ethical concerns around taking intellectual property from artists but was met with silence. Now lastly, the piece discusses the possibility that synthetic data could be an answer to all of this, but ultimately the picture that it paints is one in which the competitive pressure of trying to compete in this space has led to a significant focus on data and a willingness to barge ahead to just get it and let it see where the chips fall. So what are we supposed to make of a piece like this? On the one hand, whatever you think of the New York Times, whatever you think of their particular slant, it's extremely well sourced and seems to represent a reality going on inside these companies. But what I find myself thinking about as I read this and I watch the commentary is whether it's likely to move the needle at all on public perception around these issues. It has been years and years of data and privacy advocates screaming about why people should have access to their data and why big tech is an enemy of that without a lot of shift in public opinion or at least not enough of a shift for anything really to change. 
And it seems pretty inevitable to me that these questions are only going to be resolved in court. I think all of the big labs have determined that the right strategy is do what it takes to compete now and then fight it out in court later and let the chips fall where they may. I have to say, I think this is going to get more and not less complicated the deeper into this transformation we get. For now, though, that is going to do it for the AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.